every time I'm mentioning my mom, if I'm trying to repurpose something or I'm looking forward to purchase something eco-friendly, trendy and sustainable world, to change my household and to take it from a regular household to sustainable. And every time I mention something my mom loves at my face, just because she says that she's been through this already and she has already done that in her life. While my mom was doing all these sustainable, trendy things while living in USSR, I don't think she was doing it um, for the planet, for the ecosystem. That was just the reality she was living at. And that was her life. So people were pushed to be creative and to repurpose things and to do lots of eco-friendly things as we know for today. So let's get into the topic of what Soviet people did that was so sustainable that actually they were doing it without even thinking as a part of their reality. All these Soviet people usually used to have a reusable bag. It's actually very trendy for the past couple of years at least. And a lot of fashion bloggers are using it. I'll tell you, Soviet people were one of the most sustainable people on earth because they were using those bags until up to, I would say, um, 90s. So that was a very long life of a bag. I remember my grandma washing the plastic bags and air dry outside of the house. Um, yeah, so that was the reality they were living at. So as for doing laundry, Soviet people were using the washboard for a really long while just because they didn't have um, the um, washing machines. I'm still in my 20s, but I remember my grandma using that washing board as it was, I don't know, a week ago, because they were doing it on a regular basis, even though they had the washing machine in their house. I guess it's just the habit. I don't think any people are doing it nowadays. If you know some people that are using the washing board nowadays, please leave me the link down below because I don't know, those people are heroes. Once you washed your clothes, Usually people in Soviet Union or in Russia don't have a dryer machine, so most of the clothes are usually air dried. And this is one of the things that our foreigners are usually very surprised when they come to Russia and they see all these um, clothes air drying, especially when it's frosty and very cold outside. But you know the feeling of that clothes that were in a very cold weather overnight i can i can't just tell you what's the feeling but it feels amazing it smells amazing very fresh and it's actually one of the most sustainable things you can do just because you're not using the uh, electricity for the drying machine soviet people always compost simply because they hardly have any plastic in their household. And the other thing they didn't have, I remember, I remember me being already a teenager, a lot of people didn't have an, or didn't choose plastic bags for their garbage at home, uh, for the garbage bin. So usually you just had this bin and to throw the garbage out, you had to walk to a local compost bean that was not like a compost hole it was a compost bean and everybody used to throw that garbage into the compost bean and then you just walk back with your bean yes it's not the most um pleasant part of the video but this is true composting is one of the greatest things we can do for our planet earth Another thing, diapers. Truly, we didn't have any diapers. I mean, we did have diapers, don't take me wrong. People did have diapers, but it was just too expensive to purchase for everyday use. My aunt used to use uh, these clothes diapers. First, it was a layer of muslin blanket, and then you sweatle the baby pretty tight, so it doesn't, when the baby wiggles or cries, it doesn't fall apart. 
and of course there's lots of laundry involved and don't forget they were using the washboards so was a, there was a lot of extra work of course in Soviet times as in most of the countries that were kind of a little behind in their civilization development I don't know how to say that correctly politically correctly but I hope you understand what I tried to say so for example back in 2000 my aunt used to use reusable diapers for my cousin and only when we used to head out for example to the park or somewhere else to walk around she used to put diapers especially in winter time sometimes in summertime she just let the baby be without anything else just the um, onesies and um, yeah you see it's 2000 it was 20 years ago and people still didn't have this opportunity to use diapers on a regular basis and of course nowadays back in Russia everybody most of the people use unfortunately um, those diapers that are not biodegradable now is the funny one is a toilet paper toilet paper was luxury in soviet times so a lot of people were using newspapers for different purposes i'm not gonna go into details but you know what i mean so i remember that in my summer house we didn't have any toilet paper and there was only old newspapers involved in that um a little toilet house um, uh, Russian people would understand what I mean so um, yeah that is a funny thing I don't think I want to go back in basics to that level of using newspaper but I felt like I need to mention that as for restaurants and food um, very important to mention that even nowadays in Russia restaurants are not very well developed industry i mean don't take me wrong people go to the restaurant there are plenty of restaurants they are beautiful especially past 10 years a lot of restaurants are opening up but before that the restaurants were not the choice to skip cooking your meal so in back in russia back in soviet times everything that was cooked at home was cooked from scratch there were no deliveries involved no pickups food involved nothing of this kind so everything was cooked from scratch at home and even nowadays people hardly ever order food uh, like food deliveries they do yes more than they used to 10 years ago but not at that level as here in the US as most people don't cook maybe i'm talking about um, new york city because this is where i'm next to and that's what i know most of the u.s from what i know in the u.s a lot of people buy cooked food or they buy pre-cooked food or they buy deliveries or go for pick up some food so there are a lot of containers involved that are usually from non-recyclable materials and that thing was not even in people's mind back in soviet times as restaurants were part of the luxurious life that very few people could afford and one very funny thing that i just ran across in my memories when i was trying to um, plan this video was that when i was around 12 years old and before i used to go to buy milk in a special milk machine i'm not sure if in the us there were this kind of milk machines so i will try to attach like the image of that so you come with your special milk bin or like milk container milk i don't know uh, like a metal container there was in russia we even had a special name for that bidon and when you take your um, container for milk you go and you stay your line as the machine comes in and there is a special lady serving into your container um, the milk 
The same thing you could buy, there is very nice refreshment uh, in Russia that is called kvas, it's a fermented um, bread drink, it's delicious. And in Soviet times, you could buy that from the machine as well. Even nowadays, when I go back to Russia, they still have kind of like a retro machines. I guess it's just part of the memories that people feel really attached to because that kvass, that's the name of the drink, was delicious. So every time people used to go grocery shopping, they used to bring their reusable containers. And we are talking about beginning of 2000, so that was not very long time ago. And uh, the fact that people used to maintain their habits from Soviet times really amazed me till nowadays. As for clothing, clothing is a very creative part of all this um, Soviet time. As my mom mentioned that most of the people used to have the same clothes. So, meaning that if they had a t-shirt, like this t-shirt gonna appear in every household throughout the Soviet. And of course, nowhere people want to be the same and even in Soviet times as the idea of being the same um, was really pushed towards people, people were kind of rejecting it and of course everyone wanted to show their own personality and to express themselves through their style. A lot of women knew how to tailor their own clothes just because sometimes you're getting the dress, you're very happy, but that dress is not your size, so you have to do something with it so it fits you to fit you very well. So a lot of women used to get really creative at that point as they started to tailor their dress, they used to add some little details so they have this way to express their personality through the clothing they wear. So at the point when you already wore your dress for a very long time, I'm, I'm talking about more than 30 cycles for sure, uh, then when the clothes is already kind of worn out, it's very good timing to repurpose that clothes into your baby's clothes. This is how most of my brothers and my, uh, my clothes appeared in our wardrobe. For example, my mom used to have a fancy fur coat that was already worn out. It probably was even the fur coat of my grandma. So my mom used to take that fur coat and she repurposed this into the baby fur coat by just cutting it back to the shape of the baby uh, fur coat. So believe me, the clothes went through like 3030 times cycle at least before they were sent to the landfill. So the message of this video, first of all, we have to be very grateful for the, all the gadgets we have nowadays in our life. The second thing is very important to focus only on the essential things. It's very easy to overconsume in our world, especially when you are living in the US. I find it very easily to overconsume just because here things cost less and they're more affordable for you and if you're thirsty for um, certain gadgets, you're gonna overconsume most likely. So at some point we have to sort our life out and focus on the essential things while still being grateful for the things we own. Another thing that made me realize while planning this video that we really need to go back to basics is that simple. Certain things were so popular, I'm sure they were popular in the US and in a lot of countries all over the world at some period of time, just for some political and economical reasons in Soviet time dragged this time till nowadays and uh, people still are using things that were very popular in Soviet time but not because they want it, just because of their reality. So the point is that we need to be conscious and we need to really think about we are the only ones to be responsible 
for the planet we live in and if we have this opportunity to live in civilized world and to use this modern gadgets in our daily life we need to value them we need to make sure that we repair them we need to make sure that we really need them before we purchase them there is this famous quote there is no planet b meaning that we need to take care of our planet a our planet earth thank you guys so much for watching this video Please don't forget to subscribe to Live and Wear Neat as every Tuesday we are here with a new video and with a new topic. And yes, thank you so much for watching this video till the end and I will see you in the next videos. Bye!